Hey guys, it's Anthony. Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to talk about where the market went this past week, where we think the market's going this coming week, and if you're looking to become a consistently profitable trader, definitely hit that subscribe button. I personally trade ES and NASDAQ futures, so if you trade that, you definitely want to subscribe. It's taken me just over two years to become consistently profitable. Lots of trial and error, lots of lessons learned, lots of pain, but over time, I'm making him more consistent, and I believe that you will as well if you're not already. So without further ado, let's dive in the charts. We're taking a look at NASDAQ on the daily, and... What we can see is nothing but higher highs and higher lows. There's a whole, whole, whole bunch of support building here now at about 15,800. We can only assume higher prices. Uh, we got above this level here. Uh, we're trading into resistance to the left here at about 16,100, but the last area is just above 16,250. So you could just assume that we're gonna take the liquidity to the upside before we retrace anymore. And there's no reason to look for shorts at this time because we have a bullish market structure. However, on the Wednesday, we did wick a high and get a rejection. So if we were to pull back, you would just ask yourself, okay, where would we pull back to? Well, we already defended this level. So, you know, first area, we can come back to 15,900, see if we hold there. If we do, then we'll take out the highs. Otherwise, uh, which is the other case, and I think that this can happen instead, is everyone's bullish now. So we essentially just trend down, come down to the support here about 15,500, get to there early December, and then just trend back up and get back up to new highs by the end of the year. Essentially about 16,300, 16,400 by the end of the year, just taking out the highs to the left uh, above 16,200. So that's what I think. I think we'll pull back down there and then this would be a great buying opportunity. Fill the space here to the left, get down there, take the long off of some buying pressure and hold into year end. So. Again, I said this in the last video, if you're not in any trade, there's no trade to take because we've went up so much with no retracement. So, you know, we either consolidate here or we pull back, find some support here, or possibly all the way down to 15,400. 15,600 to 15,400 is the area where I would look to long for year end. Otherwise, no trade for swings. ES, very similar. Came into resistance to the left here a bit, got a bit of a rejection. Question is, do we get above 4,600 or do we pull back first? It looks very constructive, looks even more constructive recently than NQ. NQ looks like it's rolling over a little more. So ES could go sideways while NQ pulls back uh, or ES comes back down to 4,400. So again, my scenario is I think we go down to 4,400. We get a buying opportunity and we go up into 4,650, possibly 4,700 by year end. Those are the two scenarios I'm looking at, yes, but there's no reason to take any shorts. We want to take longs after the pullback, and if we just keep grinding up like this, then there's just no trade for swings. Why? Because I said plenty of times we're just overextended at this point, uh, just off the low, straight up. So we're probably going to correct some of this price action, get down to 4,300 at some point. NQ, same thing on the weekly, probably going to correct some of this price action, get down to 15,300 at some point. But we can go a lot higher before we do correct it. You can even see in previous times, straight up for many weeks and then came back. You know, Previously, straight up for many weeks, then filled the space. Here, straight up for many weeks, never came back here. Uh, you know, Possibly came back here in October, but you know, rallied for another six months before coming down and getting all the way down there. So my point is it can get a, go up for a lot longer than you think before coming back to these levels. So you just gotta play that carefully. Now let's take a look at the dollar and the VIX. So if you go over to DXY, DXY still coming back. We could, could come down a little bit farther based on the weekly. Uh, let's go to the daily. Daily found some support here to the left, finding some buying. So if this continues higher, we can have a little correction in the NASDAQ, a little bit of a pullback. Uh, this looks like a good area for, of support. So we could stop there. Remember dollar typically moves inverse NASDAQ. Now let's look, take a look at the VIX. VIX, last time I said it could get to, down to 12s first. We did that. So in my opinion, if we were to go any lower, we would just take out these lows, get to 12.6, and then get the correction. Why? Because I back tested this. When the VIX takes out new lows, typically the next week there's higher volatility and like a, you know, it could be like a 2-3% correction in the NASDAQ and S&P 500 um, after the VIX takes out new lows. So in my opinion, the rally, it doesn't have a much left at this point, and we are going to have a little bit of a correction, but nothing major, and it's going to be a buying opportunity in my opinion. So that's it for the market. Now I just want to jump into some intraday analysis. I know last video you guys loved that, so 
What I'm gonna do now is just go into basically the five minute and three minute, possibly one minute, take a look at NASDAQ to show some possible trades and different strategies if you're looking to trade intraday. So let's go jump down to the three minute. Now, last one we were ta taking a look at different liquidity sweeps and how we can trade that. So I'll show you just, instead of going back, we're just gonna look at a bunch of price action and show how we could have potentially taken some trades. So basically on the three minute, ignore these different little trades. That's based on the one minute time frame. What we wanna see is what happens when we shift market structure. So we were bullish, came down, but then we didn't stop at support whatsoever. So we continued lower, but then once we came up, we got rejected because we came up into resistance to the left, made another low. At this point, we pushed higher, right? Bullish market structure. So we want to look for longs when we find some buying pressure. But when do we want to look for longs? When the space has been filled to the left. Why? Because there's a whole bunch of trading here to the left. Price didn't go here. Price didn't get down here. It almost did. So what you can do is basically draw a rectangle. And you could say, all right, we went bullish. Why? Because we got above this swing high. So we're bullish once we're above this swing high. Now that we're bullish, we're looking for longs. But do we long right here? No. Why? Because we need a retracement and then we need a target. You could say the target is, in, uh, is up here for sure, but we need a retracement because you're just in the middle of the range, right? So now that we're bullish, you say, all right, there's some unfinished business over here. Why is it unfinished business? Because the high, the low, we didn't fill this. Okay, we filled it. Now, do we want a long on this candle close? No, we want proof of some buying pressure. So this next candle, green candle close, is some buying pressure. Once this three minute candle closed green, you could say it's not good because it's a little bit of a rejection candle. This next candle had some buying and the wick pushed up. So this candle you could say is bullish. What would you do? You would get in a long on the candle close. Two options, you can move your stop below this current swing low as a tight stop or a below this low because if we go below this low, then we're no longer bullish. And where's your target? Your first target is all in the unfinished business to the left now because we just dumped straight down without getting any trading up here. So first target would be this wick right here. And if this was your target, then you'd want your stop to be below this swing low, right? Because you have a nice swing low here. Boom, put the stop there. We've proven we're bullish. Target, first target's here. Uh, second target, because we're bullish, if we're bullish, the next target should be this high. So your first target's here, 27 points. Second target is gonna be 61 points. So at this point, you can just follow along and see if price gets all the way down. And there you go. So it took all the way till 12, but you got 60 points on the NASDAQ. All right, so why did this trade work? This trade worked because there's we're looking at swing highs and swing lows to determine if the market is bullish and seeking higher highs, or if it's bearish and seeking lower lows. The market was bullish here, and it went bearish, but we wouldn't have longed here because we needed proof of a bullish candle. We didn't have any bullish candles until we broke the lows. So we didn't have any proof of bullish candles until we were already bearish again. Now that we're bearish again, we pushed down, we pushed up into resistance to the left and then took another low, right? So we could have shorted this re this rejection candle for new lows. So boom, that would have been another trade short win, but it's not as juicy, right? It's not as obvious. Here's a really obvious push up above this high. So we're bullish. Then we pulled back because there's all this unfinished business to the left. Once we filled the space, do we long? No, we don't long until we have proof of a bullish close. We have a bullish candle close here, but you could say, ah, I don't like it because the wick is big. Could be pushing you lower. This one pushed up. This rejection candle pushed up. So then you can low along on this three minute candle close. Now, if we're bullish, this is a low. This is a higher high from here. And then this is a higher low. So we have a, we have a low, we have a higher high, and then we have a higher low. So if this was the low, you could just move your stop right below there. And then first target would be a very easy clean trading to the left here. And you can see right when up there, we chopped around, but the eventual target is, is a higher high because if we're bullish, we should take out the higher high. If market structure changed on us, it could have just got rejected right here. And we could have moved our stop to break even once we came here and let it ride for 61 points. So here is an amazing trade, 4.7 R, very simple trade on NASDAQ. And that would be your morning trade and you'd be, you'd be done for the day, possibly done for a week because 60 points, let's not forget, you know, if you have that $10,000 account, you know, you do one one contract, 60 points times $20 a point would put you at 1.2K. So that's a 1.2K USD trade for the morning only. 
and that was on Wednesday. So you'd be done, done for done for the day, done for the week, right? But if you have a bigger account, if you have a hundred thousand dollar account, you know you could do possibly about five five contracts because remember your stop your stop is thirteen points. So if you have a hundred thousand dollar account and your stop is thirteen points, and you do five contracts, five times thirteen points times twenty a point would be a one point three k. So if you have a hundred thousand dollar account, your risk is one point three k on five contracts, but then your reward on five contracts would be five times sixty times twenty a point which would be basically just five times 1.2, so 6K. So you have a $6,000 profit or a 6% a six percent profit in one day, intraday, trading NASDAQ just for the morning. 6K profit where you're risking 1.3K. So basically 6% reward with only 1.3% risk right then and there and you could move your stop to break even after it went to resistance to the left so then it became a risk free trade because then it's where your stop is right there and it still went so that's just one trade that I hope you enjoy this kind of video please let me know if you do love this kind of videos I can post more of these I can do these all day and do analysis through trade setups if you do like this again let me know by leaving a comment down below and uh, hit that thumbs up button make sure you subscribe for more videos just like this I post two videos a week and one's going to be every market update, basically explaining where the market is and where I think the market's going to go in the next coming days and weeks on the S&P 500 and NASDAQ. And the other one will be a trade breakdown and analysis just like this. So if you want to see more, hit that subscribe button. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.